I greet you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well done, the intrepid ones. And if you've taken the easy option and watching from home, you're very welcome. As we meet to worship God on this uh, first, the Wednesday following the first Sunday of Lent. And let us worship God in a spirit of fellowship and humility. The Lord be with you. As we gather together, let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in this Lenten season, we use the Kyrie for confession. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And so let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Lord, we confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's keep silence for a moment, and then we will pray our collect, our prayer for this day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now David will read our first lesson. Good morning. The first reading is Psalm 67. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. O let the nations Rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
If it's convenient, please stand. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to speak. This generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see something greater than Solomon is here the people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and see Something greater than Jonah is here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus began to speak. And in today's Holy Gospel, what Jesus is saying is actually not as clear as it normally is. Usually it's very, very clear and obvious, even though sometimes the, the disciples will say, what were you really meaning? It's clear what he's meaning, but what was he really meaning? But this is a bit more in sign language. So we'll use my three minutes to unpack it a little bit. Jesus refers to two instances from the Old Testament, from the Torah. He is addressing in particular the established church, the Jewish people of the time. And he's warning them that he is sent to be the fulfillment of everything that's written in the Torah, the Messiah, the promised one. And it's clear that they're not accepting him. We know that they were doing everything to try and catch him out so that they could get rid of him. And so he reminded the people, when he began to speak, he reminded them of what happened to Jonah. You know, if we'd had a full service, the Old Testament reading was from the book of Jonah. And it's a, quite a long one, but it's a part where Jonah go, is told by God to go to Nineveh and give them the final warning. Remember, it was a, they said it was a great big city. It took him three days to walk across it. And his message from the beginning at one side to the end at the other was the same. Repent. Repent of your sins. The kingdom of heaven is nigh. And we're told that they listened. And even the king of Nineveh listened. They repented. They walked. He issued a decree where sackcloth sack, cloth, and ashes. And God forgave them. So, the first part of the message is to, to the people of the Jewish church, open your eyes, take the blindfold away, and see the Messiah is here. Repent of your sins, the kingdom of heaven is nigh. And the second is a bit of a, it's, it's a similar message. He refers to the queen, the Queen of the South, he's referring to the Queen of Sheba, who came across continents because she'd heard how wonderful the wisdom of Solomon is, was, is, and forever will be. She heard and she responded. And so it's two-part message. Open your eyes, take off the blindfold, understand that the kingdom of heaven is nice, so repent of your sins. And then the second part, it's worth it. The Queen of Sheba travelled for weeks 
because she was so convinced that it would be worth it. We're beginning the season of Lent, the season of repentance. And so let us take the example from our Holy Gospel, remembering that Jesus warned the people of the time, repent, open your eyes. May we open our eyes and may we do it willingly, knowing that what we will see will be worth it. Just as the Queen of Sheba did, so may we. Amen. And now let us pray. We'll pray for the church and we'll pray for the world. We'll thank God for his goodness. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, on this wet and miserable morning, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all the elements of the weather that make it possible for us to have beautiful gardens, food to eat, sights of nature which gladden our eyes and lift our moods. Lord, let us remember that without rain, we would live in a desert without food, without water to drink, without the basis of life. And so may we take this weather as an example that in our lives, just as in our climate, there are good parts, there are more difficult parts, but everything is a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray that as we begin this season of Lent, we may go through this season with open eyes, understanding that we need to reassess our lives and identify what we might change that could make us better, better for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for our parish, for all the people of the parish, whatever their backgrounds, whatever their situation, may they be blessed by you. And may what we do be of relevance and comfort for all who wish to be part of the parish family. So help us, Lord, to worship wisely and to share our faith openly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the world. At this time of violence and warfare, we beg your forgiveness for all that is happening in the area where your Son, our Saviour, lived his earthly life. We pray for those who are victims of violence and brutality, whatever their ethnicity and religion. We ask that you will be with their families, many of whom are grieving the loss of loved ones, innocent victims. May your peace return, that peace which the world cannot give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those who we know and love who have a special need of your healing presence at this time. Some of them are known only to us and we, we share their needs, their hopes, their despair with you in the privacy of our prayers. From our parish list, we continue to pray for the Baldwin family, for George and the Dean and, uh, and for Denise. We pray for Eddie Morris, for El Coleman, John Frith, for the Kidd family, Angela and Ian, for Doris Lubin, Graham Mitchell, Hilary King, Alexa, John Beard, and Lucy Cuthbert. May they know that they are not alone and feel your presence with them. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then finally, in these prayers, we remember and give thanks for those who we've known and loved who are no longer with us. We give you thanks that we had the privilege to know them and share love with them. May they rest with you, be eternal. At this time of sadness for the Kraft family, we pray for the immortal soul of Joyce Kraft. And from our memorial book, we remember those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Francis Ashley Roberts, Vivian Charles Burroughs, Camilla Marion Moors, Henry Kenneth Thompson, Ruth Drina Collins, Valeria, Alberta, Harry, Ada Wheeler, Vera, Caroline, Olton, Arthur, Melvin Knights, and Sandra Rosina, Sandra Rosina and Marion Lasgalma. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And so let's gather together all of our prayers the prayers of our hearts and these spoken prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I wave to your sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And for those of you at home, peace be with you from the people at All Saints. We prepare the table for the Eucharist. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your, uh, your people once again through fasting, prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart through study of your holy word you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us 
his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. It's my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. body and blood of Christ our Lord. The 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 body and blood of Christ our Lord. Body and blood of Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith. Increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace and the grace and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with those of you who are here and with those who you love today and always. Amen. I do congratulate you. Well done for braving the weather and being here. It's wonderful that we're able to meet, to worship God, and to share the Eucharist. I invite you for coffee in the blue corner to uh, have some fellowship as the worship uh, ends. And for those who are at home, thank you for being with us. We worship again on Sunday, the second Sunday of Lent at 10 o'clock. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Name of Christ. <laughs>